And I'm just going to go ahead with this finale <laughs> for predestination, the, the last, uh, at least the last one part that I've got notes for. So if we can uh, turn our thoughts to the things we've already talked about. Just a note, um, when I study these things, in, uh, I, I like to study the boundaries in Scripture. When, when things started, when things ended, uh, to know what happened when and what, what followed what, what overlapped what. Uh, it, it helps you understand so that you don't think there's a conflict when he does one thing one time and another thing another time. I study when it is that the Bible reports the first time that Christ actually sent Paul to preach the new gospel of Christ crucified for our sins beyond the Jew first and also the Greek uh, seekers of God's wisdom in the synagogues. If anyone has found an earlier time than Acts 20, when it was reported in the Bible in Philippians 4.15, that at that time, the time of Acts 20, verse 6, Christ actually sent Paul to all men, then please let me know the reference, the Bible reference. I want to know where it says that before Acts 20. And if you have no Bible reference for that, uh, I ask, <laughs> implore you to, uh, to believe these Bible references that we've just shown you, Acts 20 and Philippians 4.15. Let's uh, look briefly at a reminder verse, Romans 10.17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Put that first. Before the Bible writings were completed, God spoke through to people through through the inspired writers of Scripture through Paul. Uh, hearing the Word of God today is nothing more or less than hearing the Holy Spirit of God leading you in the Bible. He works through the Bible today. Well, we'll get into that another time. I was going to go into what he doesn't lead in, but uh, he does lead in the Bible. And people that ignore that and, and invent other things or are told by someone other, you know, other ways that God leads today, circumstances or whatever, tongues or whatever, um, that's not how he does it. He does it through Scripture. And that verse just revealed it. Uh, opening your King James Bible and training your eyes on the text and believing all you read there. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, the Bible. So when you hear someone say, God sat on my bed and he talked to me and he told me that I am special, I'm an apostle. He's sending me out. And I have special powers, and he says that uh, I speak what God says, and that you are wrong and I am right. <laughs> That's basically what they're they're uh, conjuring up when they when they do these things. Uh, they're simply wandering in their own musings, though. They they're making it up. There is zero basis for that in the Bible. Today, God only speaks to us through his word, the King James Bible, 2 Thessalonians 2.13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, beloved bre brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. And that is that foreknowledge of God that, that is... Uh, spoken of in, in Romans 10, is it 10, uh, 8, uh, 829, I think it is, 829. After God foreknew, he predestined, not to be saved, but he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. And along the pathway there, going there, uh, he was calling and justifying and glorifying, 
along that path that leads to being conformed to the image of his son. And along that pathway between God calling us and God justifying us, as we said before, we believed. Romans 5 1. Uh, that's the single requirement. The only, re actually, there is another requirement that there be nothing else added. Uh, your belief in receiving that gospel to yourself, that's, that's the only thing. If you add something to it, works, um, you know, well, I got to get baptized just to be on the safe side. That's not the safe side. That's saying God's provision is not good enough for you. You don't accept it. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 But we are bound to give thanks all way to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit. And that's... How are we sanctified? Uh, let me get that verse up on the screen here. Romans 15 verse 16 That I, this is Paul, Paul speaking, and he says that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. Now, that's, that's not uh, of the Gentiles, that's to the Gentiles in this case. That I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God. Those three facts, that he's the Son of God, the Messiah, risen from the dead, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Believing the gospel of God sanctifies a person to hear and believe the, Bible, the, the gospel. They don't have to any longer bless Israel in order to be eligible to hear the gospel and believe it. So, uh, that verse tells us that we are acceptable to hear and believe the gospel being sanctified by the Holy Ghost having believed the gospel of God gospel of God those three facts that, about who Jesus is and the gospel of God does not make us acceptable as being saved it doesn't save us and the Bible never says that the gospel of God saves us there is a gospel that saves us. But when you're referring to the gospel of God, you're not referring to the gospel that saves you. It's the gospel that sets you up. It sanctifies you to hear and believe the gospel and be saved by the gospel. So uh, if you don't believe the gospel of God, that Jesus is, th is the, the Son of God, the Messiah, risen from the dead, then you're not acceptable to hear and believe the gospel of salvation. What difference does it make to, you know, if, if the guy down the street, Al or Joe, you know, he supposedly dies for your sins, what difference does that make? He's not God. He's not the Son of God. He's not pure and sinless. It makes no difference to God if he does that. Uh, you would still be in your sins. It is a prerequisite to believe the gospel of God about who Jesus is. So, Paul said, Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit. And, additionally, beyond that gospel of God uh, and belief of the truth. That would be the gospel of Christ or for us later, with a wider audience, that same salvation message is the gospel of the grace of God, as we see in Ephesians 1.13. Belief of the truth is the gospel of Christ, the gospel of salvation. Belief of the truth. The word of the, the truth of the gospel of your salvation, as in Ephesians 1.13, and in Colossians, 
chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Let's look at the Ephesians verse. In whom you also trusted, after that you heard, this is talking about people like us, uh, after the dispensation of the gospel was uh, introduced, it was introduced to the Jew first, and then when it was widened, that included us, in whom you, you and me, also trusted after that we that you heard the gos uh, heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So that's another verse that has to do with with uh, two gospels in the same verse, it, it, or same two verses. It's talking first about the gospel of God. No, the gospel of Christ to the Jew first and also to the Greek in Ephesians 1, 12. And then the next verse is uh, the gospel of the grace of God to all men. Uh, you can see that, that they are not the same gospel. Uh, they're the same saving message, but it's to two different groups of people. So it's named differently. But they're both the gospel of salvation. They're both about Christ having died for our sins and that we need to receive it to ourselves. Count on that instead of counting on our own works, our own uh, arrangements for eternity. Second Thessalonians 2.14 Whereunto he called you by our gospel. And that's the calling of Romans 8 verse 30. Romans 8. I don't have that in mind. Let me just check that. And read it. Romans 8. 30. <coughs> Welcome to the room. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. So he foreknew us. In foreknowing us, knowing us, he predestinated us to be conformed to the image of his Son. And that's way down after these things here. He says, whom he did predestinate along the way, in other words, uh, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. Can you imagine how glorious is the ascended, glorified Jesus Christ? The obtaining of the glory is what Romans 8.30 calls them, them he also glorified. And, you know, we wonder sometimes why it's in the past tense when it hasn't happened yet. But it has. Uh, Ephesians 2.6, the Lord has made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. We're in Christ today. Believers are. Uh, let's look at uh, if, uh, not Ephesians, Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10. Isaiah 46, 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times. And things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. From the beginning, God declared what would happen in the end, because he foreknew it happening. Even though it's in the future for us today, he saw it as happening. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Titus chapter 1 verse 2 tells of God that he cannot lie. God who cannot lie. But God can and will do his will eventually. In the meantime, he allows us to have free, free will, doesn't he? Free choice, free will. Um, Isaiah 55, 11. We need to choose God's way. 
So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto, it, uh, whereunto I sent it. So um, before, before we go back to Romans 8, let's look at, at uh, Ephesians 1.3. Another scripture about predestination. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And uh, those who fail to right, rightly divide and think that we have the physical blessings still that were only promised to Israel, they probably also miss our gospel. It's sad, but if, if they think that we are receiving the physical blessings promised to Israel in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the Old Testament, they probably think that the gospel of the kingdom and the, the circumcision gospel applies to them. And they rest in that and miss, miss out on believing what God is looking for today, the gospel of the grace of God, believers in it. Ephesians 1.4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. That's how God blesses us. He has chosen us in Christ, in him, before the foundation of the world. And the reason being that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And that doesn't mean <laughs> let's go out and act as holy as we can. God makes that, uh, he, he makes us righteous. He, he gives us his righteousness. He makes us that way, that uh, righteous and without blame, it says. Going on in Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And Paul is writing to save people in, in Ephesians, and to a variety of people in, in Romans, but it's after he's told them how to be saved in Romans 1 through 5. Excuse me just a minute here. Got to sneak. <coughs> Didn't get it off in time, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, another one coming, hold on. Well, it's not coming. It'll come when it's ready. <laughs> Some sneezes have a mind of their own, I guess. Having, this is Ephesians 1, 5, having, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And Paul, you know, he's telling us that we are predestinated to the adoption. Well, what's the adoption? Uh, Romans 8.23, we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, or, you know, uh, the, the redemption of our body. Well, Paul describes our bodies being redeemed elsewhere as being the catching up. Paul is saying that as believers in Paul's gospel, we are predestinated to the catching up having predestinated, predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And remember that God said, I will do all my pleasure. Let's go on to verse 6 in Ephesians 1, and we're going to read on down through 11. Uh, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us, accepted in the beloved and that is salvation that's believing the gospel of salvation the gospel of Christ of the grace of God verse 7 in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins who's the, 
Who's ha who has the <laughs> forgiveness of sins? In this case, he's saying that we do. We believers. We have forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which on, are on earth, even him, excuse me, even in him. In other words, not in one or the other, not in heaven, gathered together not in heaven, gathered together not on earth, but gathered together in him together in one all things in Christ verse 11 in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will and once again uh, it applies here Romans 8 29 uh, verses 29, 30, and 31. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He is for us. It's, it's amazing. Uh, it's wonderful. Uh, he's, he's for us so much that he sent his son to die for our sins and, and be separated from the Father by our sins. Jesus Christ took your sins and my sins on himself. God made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And that's not something that you attain to or something you can accomplish or do. Christ does it all. He did it all. God made you the righteousness of God in Christ when you believed the gospel of salvation, that Christ died for all your sins, that, that they're all paid for, all died for already, 